Hi everyone. Oh, I just want to say this. I have to come and give so much love. Oh my God. I have received so much love and support behind my YouTube and the TikTok um, that I put up regarding my foster twins um, on Christmas Day. And, um, and everyone wants to know the update and of uh, what's been going on with that and we did have a um court hearing recently and the judge did feel like it was in the best interest that they stay with the foster family that they're with um and no matter if these people really have their best interests at heart or whatever you know he did say that you know he know i bonded with them and love them tremendously but he has to do what's in the best interest of my twins right by leaving them with the foster family that they're with and i it, it's like you're numb because i was never a bad foster parent and i haven't did anything wrong at all but let me tell you this. I knew this was an unbiased, a bias. My apologies. I knew this was a biased situation from beginning to start. Um, only because of the ethnicity of my previous foster daughter. I'm just calling it what it is. And when I see the measures that these people have went through to oppose me from regaining custody back of my foster twins, and they know I have nothing but love for them. They know I love them like I birthed them myself. And I had them since 10 days old. And they're now a year old. Let me tell you this. In this courtroom setting. And it was so much. You you just get to the point where you, you're just like you're in a, a movie. Because you can't believe what you're hearing or what you're seeing. And But you know what? I'm okay. I'm okay. I had to forgive these people and surrender them to God because and kept telling God why I was hearing what they say, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. They know not what they do. My twins adoption caseworker, I had to let mine she she got on the stand. I had never met this lady. This lady has never been in my home. I have never really talked to this lady uh, until the day that she was removing um, my twins. I had never met her. Um, and the to see that her, she got on the stand and she spoke on behalf of my previous foster daughter. She wasn't even her caseworker. And then the comments that was made regarding my 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 twins I never have met this lady this lady has never been in my home this lady hasn't built a re relationship with me nothing nothing whatsoever so that was one situation that was one thing and to hear the questions behind with what the CPS attorney was asking and she made a comment regarding uh, do you not know that uh, foster children can be moved at any time? And I'm like, yeah, you do know that. But I was in the process of adopting mine. You know, I don't, because when kids come in your home, you would know if they are temporary, uh, permanent, or a respite. You, you know that up front. And I'm like, I was in the process of adopting attorney and all and was already calling my babies the names that I was changing it to, changing their names to that's just how far it was so I'm listening to them and and then she tried to bring up something that was occurred with my oldest daughter back in 2017 we're in 2021 and I've been doing foster care for over three years and I started just sitting there and I'm just like, they have nothing relevant to even say why they're opposing me, don't want me to have custody other than back, regain custody, other than they just don't want them with me. 
they don't want them with me at all. And here's the here's the other part. The CPS attorney also, you know, you know how they present evidence uh, to something that why they uh, opposing me from regaining custody. She made sure. She made sure she showed the judge a picture. A picture of my previous foster daughter. A, a picture. She showed a picture of her. And, and the thing is, is that the situation that they, the allegation that was made on my home had nothing to do with me. And it had nothing to do with my foster twins. Nothing at all. Not, from beginning to the end. And even the situation that the allegation was filed on, that wasn't even nothing intentionally. That wasn't even nothing like with ill intent. That wasn't no type of abuse or whatever, but they want to paint this picture of me being negligent or they want to paint this picture of some type of things that fabricated information that they have been given. But you have all your records, you have all your your videos and everything that you could possibly have to stand on. And the question that I kept getting asked was, where is the foster agency in this? Well, the foster agency had closed down. But that was my thing too. Because I had built such a good, I thought I built a good rapport with the foster agency, the director, the the caseworkers that was through the foster agency, um, and none of them stepped up. None of them stepped up, and these are the same people that used to praise me. Even the attorney alitum, these were people that I had built such a rapport with, and my twins' caseworker before they switched to the adoption caseworker, I had a relationship with her too, and. It's like these people would not jeopardize anything for them themselves. They would not jeopardize anything when it comes to themselves to help you out, even though they know you have their best, their, their child's best interest at heart. Even that, even, even when they know that I love my twins, I miss them so much. It's not a day go by that I'm not thinking about them. And the other thing is, is that, this the caseworker right the my twins caseworker keep in mind i never met this lady they you know put her on a stand and she says something and i knew it wasn't right when they was asking her how was my babies doing in the foster home that they're with she never said that they were doing good she said that they were thriving thriving and when I tell you when she said that, when I tell you something in my stomach turned like a bad cramp, it turned like a bad cramp. Like, you're lying. You're lying. And then the, the question was asked, was they talking or trying to talk or anything? And she said, no, not really. My babies are almost two. I had them since 10 days old. Their first year was with me. A little over a year was with me because I was in the process of adopting after the parents' rights got terminated. And you know a mama knows. A mama knows when her child is in distress. A mama knows. And all I looked at is that these people don't worry about or don't think about the love and bond with a parent and the and somebody else's kids. They don't look at that. They're just looking at, oh, we don't want her to have them. And I, as you, if you hear my other videos, you know why they don't want me to have them. Because I haven't did anything wrong. All this stuff and all this fabricated information that has been given to oppose me from getting custody, it has been, it, it, yeah, it's been hurtful. But you know what? Touch not my anointing and do my prophets no harm. They don't know what they're doing. And I had to forgive them and give them over to God. And so when the judge said, you know, well, he knew I bonded with them and and love them and so on and so on. We just going to do what's in the best interest of them. And you're looking like, you know, but when God say be still, be still. So I nodded and I said, yes, sir. And that was the end of that. 
you know, and, but God didn't say it was over. He said, you did all what you can do. Now let me do what I need to do. And so all I have is my faith and I'm going to continue praying and trusting God in his word that whatever he said he would do, he's going to do it. Sometimes we just need to be still and just trust the process. He knows my heart desire. He knows that I miss my baby tremendously. I don't want, my thing is this, I never want any child and mainly, you know, my foster twins that became my kids to get caught up in this system. And then they're heavily medicated. And then they're, you know, they got this going on with them. They got that going on with them. I wanted to give my children a chance and to see the measures that these, that, that these people have went through. And if you follow this young lady, I forgot her name, but she's on TikTok and she talks about Texas CPS system like crazy. And she gives facts as well. And, um, and if you look at the Brianna Bacham story, I may be saying her last name wrong, but our stories, or a line a little bit. Anybody can make an allegation on your home. And I don't know why is this okay. And But let me tell you this. No weapon form against us will prosper. And what the devil has meant for evil, God is going to use it and turn it around for our good. See, what they did was for evil. Because it was no reason for them to remove my twins. It was no reason because she was my foster daughter was discharged from my home. All of this is just abuse of power. And I got to trust God through this. And my baby's rooms are still up. It's not because he hasn't said it's over. God hasn't said it's over. Just because a judge says this, this, that, and the other, you got to trust in God. You got to trust that he's going to do what he said he would do. Now, all the prayers, all the support that I have received has been nothing but a blessing. Nothing but a true blessing nothing but a true blessing and i have this the, the support oh my god you know is now that the world knows and i and i i want it to get in the right hands send it to whoever you know i will be glad to sit down with anybody because us as foster parents you know i'm no longer a foster parent um but at being a foster parent it's like this is so many, I have talked to so many foster parents and their situations are a little bit similar. But when I, when I tell people the measures that they went through with towards me, it shocks some, but then it doesn't shock a lot of them. And I'm like, cause this is the first time I've ever experienced anything like this. Again, I was doing foster care for three years and never had anything filed on my home you would think that these people would be looking at looking at that you know and not thinking that oh she didn't want her previous foster daughter so we're going to make sure we do everything for not her not to have her babies that she know, that we know she wants no they don't know none of they don't realize none of that they don't and um but you you know what you just trust god you continue to pray and you keep moving forward because I, I refuse to get the enemy any more satisfaction, any more entertainment, because I just, and all, it, it just has been a roller coaster. But God has taught me, He has humbled me so, so good, you know, through this process. And you know how God will put you through things. He will put you through things to, um, to get you where He needs you to, or wants you to be. And He'll restore everything you lost, everything the enemy stole. And, but you got to trust him. You got to trust that he's going to do that. And every day, Christmas time, because my twins was home this time last year. And it was, it was a little hurtful, but you know, I got through it. I was just in their room and just praying that, you know, they was having a, an amazing Christmas. My babies was happy babies. They was happy babies. And I don't know the family that they're with. I know nothing about these people at all. And I wish I could have talked to the foster mom at the court. Uh, but they made sure they got her out of there. They made sure they got her out of there or whatever. Um, because their first life, their baby books, videos, and everything, I have all of that. 
I still have so many clothes and all of that stuff. And I'm if and it's just like just to sit and talk to her because people paint a picture of you and then people start looking at you in a negative light when when they if they really knew you, they'd be like, wow, you know, she is really a nice lady, you know, or whatever. And it was it was probably and I would be honest, it was probably how I looked at the biological parents of my foster twins everything that I was hearing was negative, right? But when I took the initiative and I wanted to meet them, to show them and let them know that they didn't have to worry about the twins, they were loved, they were spoiled, get their self together. I just wanted the mom and the dad to know that I have their best interests at heart and you don't have to worry about them. And they was, they was okay. And that's the heart that I have. I know God has a purpose for me and it's with helping young people or people, you know, that's just me. I do it nat naturally. And to see the extent that all the stuff that I have went through behind just becoming a mom and the attack that these people have done with fabricated information to oppose me from getting custody, it's been hurtful. And I want to put this stuff on a platform with other foster parents um, because I know it would shock a lot. It would bring awareness to so much. And it's and the, and the thing is, is that when is this going to stop? Because it's going to keep going, keep going, keep going until something is done about it. And um, but to God be the glory. I just thank God for you guys. I thank God from you don't know me. And the love and support that you have shown me has been simply amazing. And it, it was making me emotional, just all the love and just every, all the comments that I have received. Um, and I will be continuing to put up pictures and, and stuff like that because I want my babies to know that, you know, that they're loved, they're wanted, and we're waiting patiently for their return. And no matter what, how God works it. And I just know that I wouldn't do anything different um, with the fight that I have been in. I, I wouldn't do anything different. It's been a journey, but this is stuff we do for our kids. This is things we do. We hurt behind our kids. We do. We hurt. And um, But this is, it has been truly a wake-up call. Um, I can't even say that I would recommend fostering to anyone. I want my story to help people. I want my story to, uh, I just want to advocate. I just, I mean, because if you would sit and listen to a lot of other foster parents that have reached out to me and their story, this is hurtful. But, and especially when we're good foster parents and we be in it for the right reasons. My babies wasn't a check, with them being in the system, when these kids are in a system, that's a check for them. That's a check. They got to keep their money coming. They get paid good. They got to keep their money going. So as long as they can keep them in the system, they're good. But I just I just didn't want that for my previous foster daughter. I didn't want that for my twins or any other fosters that I had. But see, here's the thing. All the other fosters, other fosters that I had, see, I knew how long they were going to be with me. That was told to me up front. That's why it was crazy that the CPS attorney was asking me that, oh, do you know that they can move your foster twins, you know, move fosters anytime? Yeah, you do. But I was in the process of adopting mine. And they don't want you to have that knowledge. They don't want you to have that knowledge. And I try my best not to look at the racism and all this stuff or abuse of power and stuff, but I'm just call it like it is because this 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 doesn't it doesn't make sense and it's hurtful that you don't see the love that not only myself but that other people have for when they when you keep kids in your in their home for so long you're not only messing up that family but you're messing up the kids because these kids get bounced around and then their their brain cells they they start getting damaged do the hit do the research behind it it messes them up. And when she said that my babies were thriving, the caseworker on the stand, and how that feeling that came in my stomach, no, they're not. No, they're not. They want my twins to forget about us. 
But um, kids never forget who their mom was. They won't. All the little videos that we have, I may try to post them later. Uh, when they were, you know, just as they got older. And uh, them trying to talk and shaking their head no. And all this stuff, the memories that we have. And it's just, they don't look at this stuff. And again, I haven't done nothing wrong. Nothing at all wrong at all. Nothing. I became a mom. And I love working with kids. I always have been doing it for so long. It's never a dull moment. And I'm a pretty outgoing, hyperactive person, you know. And so, but I was choosing to start raising kids all over again. But it was a blessing. It was a blessing. And because you want to make that difference. And you just, you know, these these kids don't ask for this situation that they're in. They don't. But this is that's the update um but i thank you guys i thank you so much for all the love all the support all your prayers please continue to pray and you know send it to send my videos to whoever to get in the right hands because i'm a i mean i'm talking about dr phil um talk show uh what's her name miss hall Tamara Hall, anybody. My thing is, all I'm trying to do, and I'm thinking about the podcast and all that stuff, podcast, and it's just, you know, people are coming at me with so many different things to do. Um, but I just think when it comes to being a foster parent or, or, or yeah, being a foster parent and people experience, it's just going to help others. Um, I'm not trying to knock foster care. I just... It's just pretty much that the abuse of power and the abuse gets so bad, like the abuse of power gets so bad to the point, don't nobody want that, you know, want to feel like they can't, they want their home, their home or their life would be in an uproar behind something they love to do. Because everybody that knows me, they would tell you for people to know me and to know or see that I would, I'm what I have been through behind uh, CPS and what CPS has done with a lot, every fabricated information that they could possibly do to oppose me from getting custody because I, I think it would have been kind of really nothing if I would have just accepted everything and just let my babies go. But I became a mom and I would do the same fight for my biological too. I just became a mom and I don't regret it. I don't regret it whatsoever. The only hurtful part is, is that my babies are not home. The hurtful part is, is that, you know, you want, you just, I just ask God to cover them every single day, every night, throughout the day, wherever they may be. I ask God to just cover them, shield them, protect them. And I always keep, and I continue to say, God, if it's your will, I know they'll be back home. If it, whatever you promised, I know you would restore. You would do what, what you promised. I know if you promised it, if you said it, it will be done. And you got to trust it and just believe it. And, and you know no weapon formed against you will prosper. They may form, but they won't prosper. But everything that was done was for evil. And you know what it says. What the enemy meant for evil, God should turn it around and use it for our good. And I stay in that. I stay in the word. I stay praying. Still running around hyperactive, you know, because I know God got it. Because I had to be still and God had to take it from me. And let and I had to give it to him, surrender it. And I had to forgive all these people that hurt me deliberately. I had to forgive them because I couldn't give these people no power. I had to forgive them and then surrender them to God. I had to. That's the only way you're going to, he's going to humble you and you're going to have that peace of mind. And to, to each and every one that are going through, just stay in your faith. Keep yourself around positivity and, and just know that God got you. God got you. And he's not going to, he's never going to leave you nor forsake you. You believe that and you trust that. And you stand on that. And he's not going to put no more on you than, than you can bear. 
and it may hurt going through the test. <laughs> it may hurt like crazy, but a testimony is going to come out of it. Just believe it. Just trust it. And just, just keep going. And, and just keep trusting God that he's going to do it. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. Because I'm not where I was. If the, when my videos first started, I was in a bad headspace. And um, I was because I, I, had, I, I felt like, I mean, well, I had lost my babies. You know, I had, they had taken them and the way they took them. Like I had them on organic foods and I cared about their digestive system. I cared about how they slept, ate everything. You know, I was particular about what they wore, everything, you know, a mama's love. And to see, to see this, the judge said one thing, but God says another thing. And in my heart, no, it's not over in my heart. It's like, I, you know, we'll get these feelings when it's, it's done, but I couldn't, it, it's like something, it's, it's a hold. It's like, I'm not done yet. I'm not done. I'm not done. You trust me. I'm not done. I don't know what God has in store, but I know he's working and I know he's working because so many things has taken place that I couldn't, that I wouldn't have thought took place. And he let me know that I that I had to get out of it, basically. Basically, you know how I say the battle is not ours, it's his, and cast all his, our cares upon him. I, I had to step out of it. I had to. And so I say this with all sincerity. Trust God. And I thank you guys so much for all your prayers, all your support. Um... Again, send the video. I would love to sit down with anybody so they know, you know. Um, and I do feel like, you know, me and other foster parents, previous foster parents, needs to it needs to be on a platform because this has got to get out out here in order for it to bring awareness and for this for it to be a change because this you need to get these kids out the system, but these people need a job and how they gonna get paid. But no, but just know I love my babies. They're not home. Um, the judge did say he felt like it was in the best interest that they stay with the foster family they're, that they're with. And they're hoping that foster family will adopt them from what I'm understanding. Um, I know nothing about them, um, but I knew that they was trying to get them adopted by any means necessary. They didn't want them with me. So they don't care if the family love them, want them or whatever. And they're almost two. So I know they're into everything because they was into everything here, here at home. Um, but I know nothing about them uh, or where, where their location is. Um, I'm thinking it's close, about an hour away or something like that. But um, my thing is like, I just trust God. Again, I just thank you. For all the love and support. Uh, but that's the update on my little ones. And just keep us in your prayers. Um, continue supporting. Um, and just know it, it's not unnoticed. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you so much for all the love and support. You guys be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. And again, I thank you. <laughs> Bye.